Good evening, and thank you for joining us for our first Community Policing Town Hall, where we'll be addressing some of your questions around crime trends in your area of town. I'm Alicia Manzano, and I'll be serving as your moderator tonight. During APD's past town halls that were focused on other topics, lots of questions were being poured in on other topics related to crime in your neighborhoods. So tonight, we're taking those questions and we will be answering them directly from the area commands around the city. I'd like to start off by introducing our speakers. First, we have Chief Harold Medina, Northeast Area Commander Greg Weber, from the Valley Area Command, Lieutenant Kevin Napoleon, Northwest Area Commander Art Sanchez, Southwest Area Commander Tim Espinosa, Foothills Area Commander Jimmy Collins, Lieutenant Rene Barraza, filling in tonight for Commander Johnny Yada in the Southeast, and Commander Joseph Veers, who oversees the traffic unit. I'll now hand it over to Chief Medina to say a few words to start us off. Chief? Thank you, Alicia. Good evening, Albuquerque. This is Chief Medina with the Albuquerque Police Department. And we're going to be talking about crime uh, specifically to each area command, and each commander will be giving an update. But overall, on the topic of crime, I just wanted to talk about uh, some of the things that we have occurring with the Albuquerque Police Department. Number one, our officers are dedicated to making the community safe. Day in and day out, our officers are arresting individuals throughout the community. It is imperative that as an administration, I continue to work with the other parts of the criminal justice system uh, that sometimes uh, give that feeling that uh, an in individual is released before our officers even finish uh, their police report. We're working to make this system stronger and we're being advocates for all the other parts of the system that need more resources so that they could get those resources so we could have a strong criminal justice system that protects its citizens and at the same time allows individuals to get the help and the resources that they need. Uh, the Albuquerque Police Department is also uh, balancing the need for community outreach through our ambassador program and being tough on crime through some of the operations that we conduct uh, day in and day out. Uh, the, no the number one thing we need to continue to do is be proactive and create a culture of proactive uh, response to crime within the Albuquerque Police Department in the city of Albuquerque. Our anti-crime operations, which started last September, have resulted in numerous arrests every week and on a weekly basis we are focusing on those individuals who already have felony warrants or committing other crimes and taking those individuals into custody. Our downtown operations are focusing as the city reopens and downtown is such a big part of our economic uh, growth as a city that people can feel safe to frequent the downtown area and know that there's an officer presence and that uh, the criminal activity down there will be uh, dealt with swiftly and quickly. Our Montgomery operation, which was the first of its kind that we initiated, we took a command post and placed it in a community that was seeing a surge of homicides at the beginning of the year. I'm happy to announce that since this operation was conducted, there's been no further incidents of homicides in this area. Most importantly, this was a change from the past where we flooded a community and we ticketed every individual that committed a traffic violation in those areas. We worked with the community to make the community strong, to give them the information and knowledge needed to report crime, to identify crime, and how to work better with the Albuquerque Police Department. Our street racing operations, we have to thank our partners with the New Mexico State Police and ensure that we continue to work to stop these reckless activities on our street. No more lives could be lost to these reckless acts by individuals who want to street race. I'm going to toss it back to you, Alicia, and we'll begin with some of the commanders. Thank you so much, Chief. And before we get to the questions, we know you sent a lot of those questions in. We'll try to get to as many as we can. I'd like for you to hear from each of the area commands to hear about the trends in your neighborhoods. So first, we're going to hear from Commander Greg Weber in the Northeast. Greg? Thank you very much. My name is Commander Greg Weber, and the Northeast area is my area command. For anyone who has questions about what that might encompass, we're talking about the area north area north of I-40 and east of I-25 up to about Eubank. So it's a rather large uh, area that encompasses businesses and lots of residential areas, as well as our uptown area and our mall area, which is a significant economic factor here in the city. At the beginning of the year, we started 
with uh, a goal to reduce our armed robberies in that area command by at least 15% from the previous year. As we got into the year, we got down almost 20%, and we're very proud of our officers who were able to make those efforts and do the things necessary in our specialized units in order to make that stuff happen. One of the things that did unfortunately occur was we noticed a, a huge uptick in homicides, and it was all centered in one area on Montgomery. I worked with Deputy Chief Donnie Alvetta as well as Chief Medina to develop that 60-day plan that the chief mentioned earlier in his opening remarks. And I'm very proud of the fact that during that time, instead of just going and trying to stop everybody that moves or identify every individual in that area, we took steps to make sure that we were not criminalizing people who just lived there and wanted to feel safer. So we targeted our enforcement to those individuals driving the violent crime in that area. The officers conducted over 650 separate patrol checks in those apartment complexes and those business areas. We did outreach events at every single apartment complex that we advertised and then were able to interact with citizens who lived there, interacted with management, um, and were able to pass out resources. So we're very proud of that operation. At the conclusion of that operation, we've now shifted our resources into the downtown area. As many of you know, the malls, uh, the outdoor mall as well as the Coronado Mall and the Windrock Center are all located in that area. And one of the things that we need to make sure of is that we protect those um, areas where we know we have large numbers of citizens going into the area to do business and we also have a huge economic, um, a huge economic impact to the city in terms of the money that's brought in from that area. Those people are our partners and we're continuing to work with them at this point. Um, with that, I think I would pass it on and I'll answer any questions later on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commander Weber. And next we're going to go to the Valley Area Command and Lieutenant Kevin Napoleon. Hello, I'm Kevin Napoleon. I'm a lieutenant for the, uh, or actually acting commander for the Valley Area Command. Uh, the Valley Area Command is quite large, just like the Northeast. It runs from I-25 to the river, from the Balloon Fiesta to parts of uh, Rio Bravo. So it encompasses quite a big area, residential, commercial, as well as the downtown area, which is uh, a big area for us that has uh, quite a significant financial impact, economic impact to the city, and is one of the uh, issues that we have tried to address specifically with our operations plan that the chief mentioned earlier. As far as the area command itself, uh, overall this year, the Valley Area Command has seen double digit percentage uh, drops in all property crimes and robberies, actually. So uh, over 10% in every category, we've, we've seen drops in those. Uh, specifically, commercial burglaries is about two thirds of what it was last year. So over 33% less than what it was last year, which is uh, great work by officers as well as all our partners with, with security forces and everyone else who have combined and all the neighborhood associations who has helped us help them. Um, unfortunately, this, last, or this year, uh, we have seen an increase in our aggravated assaults and batteries and we're trying to specifically target that. Um, by doing that, we've also nearly doubled our weapons arrests uh, this year compared to last year. Uh, now the area command, like I said, is quite large and we have a, f a few specific areas of concern. One of them is the downtown area, which I'm sure uh, many of you guys see uh, in the news about drag racing, the modified exhaust, ATVs racing up and down the streets, um, as well as uh, parking lot parties, which lead into shootings. Um, with our 60-day operation plan that we've uh, we started, I believe, at the beginning of last month, um, we've been able to decrease those incidents, um, and we're able to do that by having officers conduct TAC plans. Um, we have specialized units who are also helping with the, the op plan. We have investigative units. Those are our undercover detectives to try to infiltrate uh, certain organizations that are conducting these parties or, or shootings, as well as the narcotic activity that's going down on there. Uh, we have our traffic unit who is helping with a lot of the drag racing, a lot of the modified exhaust issues that is, that is creating an impact for all the residents down there who have to listen to the loud noises as they go up and down the street. We're trying to take a proactive response to it before, I believe July 1st here in a couple weeks when we open up fully um, for all business. And that being said, all these bars are going to start opening up. So we're trying to take, uh, get ahead of the ball on it uh, by having this, this op plan. Uh, another issue that we have in the valley is our 
are crimes against and by people experiencing homelessness, specifically in our, our downtown area, um, Robinson Park, Coronado Park, and Wells Park. We've addressed this by um, reaching out to the individuals experiencing homelessness and to provide services for them, to try to help, help them get off the street and help them uh, to stop being victimized. Uh, we work with uh, heading home families and communities and, and Albuquerque, uh, Albuquerque Community Services. Um, also, um, my commander who I'm filling in for, uh, Josh Brown, has started, uh, still in the beta process of social, social dispatching, where it's an application where officers could log locations where individuals experiencing homelessness are in the middle of the night, so instead of an officer responding in the morning, uh, these services can respond to them to help assist these, these individuals, getting them the care and help that they need. Uh, and then lastly, the other issue is the narcotic activity in the valley. I think that this is probably a citywide um, issue, but I know speaking from the Valley Area Command, we send out, every watch has houses as well as locations that we send out to our narcotic detectives so they could follow up monthly. Uh, we send out different addresses to them to, to help them follow up on that and make sure that uh, all our officers, not only the locations, but are well aware of individuals who are driving crime and we send those to the detectives as well so they can follow up with the investigations from there. That's, those are the three main concerns as far as and issues involving the Valley Area Command and we're trying our best to uh, address them every single day. Thank you so much, Lieutenant. That was very informative and we appreciate all that you're doing in the downtown area. Um, so next we're gonna go to my direct left here and um, hear from Commander Art Sanchez from the Northwest Area Command. Commander. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm uh, Art Sanchez. I am the commander for the Northwest Area Command. Uh, my boundaries are everything north of I-40, uh, west of the river, uh, out into the open uh, space, and north into the uh, Rio Rancho uh, city limits. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for giving us this opportunity to talk about our area commands and give you an update as uh, where we stand uh, regarding crime in our area command. Um, the area command, uh, the Northwest Area Command currently, we've been pretty lucky, and in fact, we have uh, shown a lot of uh, reductions in uh, pretty much uh, all of our categories, in, uh, in, um, especially with regards to uh, property crimes. Now, the Northwest Area Command is a little bit different. Uh, because the biggest issue in our uh, area command is the um, uh, property crimes, ag assaults, and speeding. Uh, so with uh, the ag assaults, uh, we actually saw about a 26% uh, decrease. Uh, however, last month we started to see a little bit of an increase. Um, in uh, our property crimes, we actually saw uh, about a 21% decrease. Now, I think the thing that we have to keep in mind is when we're comparing these numbers is uh, 2019. Uh, obviously, 2019 was very different. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, there was a lot of challenges that we all faced, and so the type of crimes that, that were being committed last year uh, are a little bit different than this year. Uh, we have uh, seen an increase in our area command uh, in homicides, unfortunately. Um, however, we are working different tact plans to address those uh, by looking at our numbers to see where uh, where we are seeing some of these assaults uh, happening. Uh, we are doing other programs. I know in some of the shootings that we had, uh, it had to do with parties. Uh, so we started doing outreach. Our PRT teams are doing outreach to uh, areas where we have had party calls, uh, they will uh, go contact the residents and just inform them of, uh, you know, how to how to how to be safe when you're having a party uh, or get a, a, a gathering, making sure there's no underage drinking, and more importantly, know who's coming to those parties because that has been a nexus for us in our shootings. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, by all means, uh, uh, bring them out to us. And you can find our emails on the city website. So if you have any questions, please uh, send me an email. I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. Thank you so much, Commander. We're going to go to the Southwest Area Command and Tim Espinosa. Commander Espinosa. Thank you, Alicia. Um, I'm Timothy Espinosa. I'm the Southwest Area Commander. 
um, going on 19 years with the Albuquerque Police Department. Uh, been in the Southwest Area Command for a little over three years now. Our, uh, our boundaries are I-40 south to the Rio Bravo, Dennis Chavez area, and everything west of the Rio Grande River. Uh, some of our southern areas start to cross over with county, but that's pretty much what covers it. The, uh, the main focus for the Southwest Area Command is based off of community policing concepts. Um, we have a lot of programs and initiatives going on that focus around that, and we're getting a lot of them going now that uh, the state is starting to open back up with the uh, restrictions from the, the COVID uh, pandemic that we've had. Um, main concerns that are hitting the Southwest Area Command um, have to do with our hotel motel area off of Coors and Iliff. Um, we've had some uh, recent activity, unfortunately, this last week we've had a couple of homicides in that area. Uh, we do have a lot of resources within the department and outside the department that we focus on that area. Um, we have a lot of TAC plans and initiatives, a lot of police presence um, to hopefully curb that, and we're going to be tapping into some more resources going into the future to make sure that we're focusing on that area. Another hotspot area for the Southwest Area Command is the Coors and, um, Coors and Central area. Over the last three years that I've been there, the Coors and Central corridor, which, which is about a quarter mile in all directions from that intersection, encompassed about 36 to 40 percent of the overall call, calls for service in the entire Southwest Area Command. Um, when I first came into the uh, to take over as acting commander several years ago, Chief Medina spearheaded the uh, now PRT teams and we got to start one in the Southwest based off of these numbers. I've been happy to say that uh, the majority of those calls for service, um, about 20% now are initiated by officers and not just called in by the public. So that's a success for us in that corridor. We do have some homelessness issues as far as some uh, property crimes that stem from it, some narcotics. Um, we also do have a large amount of traffic that goes through that area that we focus on. Uh, additionally, the concerns in the Southwest have to do with some drag racing along West Central area. Unfortunately, we had a couple of uh, fatal accidents that occurred at the intersection of Unser and Tower over the last year that uh, actually sparked us to uh, work with the city council on a speeding has a name campaign that has taken off citywide. Um, we've worked with our motors unit and other specialized units to focus on our drag racing on our areas of uh, concern along answering cores. Um, we also have an issue of concern with shots fired in the area. Uh, we are close to the West Mesa. We do have a lot of people that shoot off guns in that area. However, it does trickle into the city limits. Uh, fortunately, we're one of the few area commands that has our shot spotter technology, our gunshot detection equipment. And we use that on a daily basis to respond immediately to uh, shots being fired in the area in the Southwest in certain geographical areas. And we usually can get units there within a short amount of time. We've had some significant arrests that have occurred based off of this technology. And I think in the future, as we expand, it's gonna um, help us out a lot more. Uh, I'd like to close out on my uh, um, Southwest Area Command by you know, talking about our youth leadership uh, lowrider program that we have. Um, our PRT spearheaded that. They've worked with uh, community members over the last two years to develop a youth leadership program. And if you guys are interested in it, please take a look. Um, it, it was sponsored by uh, city council. Our, our administration jumped on board. And I think it's a very successful uh, project that shows how the community can work together and uh, you know have a lot of positive outcomes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commander. And you mentioned some violent crime activity that's been happening in your area, Commander. And I wanted to give the chief an opportunity to just uh, touch on that for just a moment. You know, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the administration and everybody that has supported us over the past few years. Our increased technology at the Albuquerque Police Department has definitely given us more tools to fight violent crime uh, and property crimes. Uh, we have license plate readers uh, throughout the city that we didn't have before. We have shot spotter in, in three of the uh, six area commands and we're looking to expand to all six area commands. Uh, our real-time crime center continues to get new uh, improved technology and we're looking to put more technology even directly at the hands of our officers through uh, in, uh, developing a new uh, records management system so we're slowly moving to get the equipment we need and uh, which is going to make us very uh, 
able to do the job that we need to do to, to combat this crime problem. A lot of times we get questions about an investigation, and I think it's important to mention that it's very difficult for us to release exact details or uh, confirm information early on in an investigation. Even today we had a homicide where there's been questions, reference uh, issues or concerns that are circulating through the neighborhoods that were involved. We just sometimes need to protect the integrity of that investigation. Our administration has been very good at releasing this information. And as soon as we're able to release information to the public, we will release it. If it's something that's a public safety concern, we'll immediately release what we can to ensure that the public is safe. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you so much, Chief. And if you're just joining us, we'll be getting to all of your questions that you sent in beforehand. All of the commanders and lieutenant is here to answer those questions. But first, we're hearing from the area commands. And next, we'll be hearing from Commander Jimmy Collins from the Foothills. Thank you, Alicia. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, I'm Jimmy Collins. I'm the commander of the Foothills. And I just came into my 24th year with the Albuquerque Police Department. And of that, I've been in the Foothills about three and a half years. Historically in the foothills, when I took over up there, large, the large issue that I saw were property crimes. Um, we had pretty low incidence of, of any type of violent crime, and, and property crime was the main focus. Currently, our reduction rates are much like some of the other area commands, that they're in the 10% or higher, which is a, a really good success. But we have had an uptick in some of the violent crimes and the homicides. Um, Speaking with the investigations divisions, they are looking mostly at narcotics nexus for these types of offenses. And it doesn't seem to be centered around one specific area. They seem to be kind of random, uh, which makes it really difficult for us to, to try to pin down how to be proactive on something like that. But the officers are still maintaining a, a heavy presence in the areas where these crimes are occurring. Um, specifically up in the foothills. Um, we deal a lot with uh, incidents that occur along the central corridor, and that's all the way from tramway down to Wantabo. And I guess I should have said that my area command boundaries, I forgot, I apologize. Um, everything east of Eubank, uh, city limit to city limit, north and south. And so that's just a little bit south of Paseo del Norte. And then it also includes all of the trailheads that feed into the trail system on our side of the mountain. Um, so right now at Central and Tramway, we, we do have some concerns with some of the issues that are going on there. There's a, a bike park that I do get a lot of calls on where we're having some issues with folks experiencing homelessness up there. Uh, we're really working on getting the field briefings up there, having the proactive response team that Commander Espinosa spoke about, each one of our area commands has one, and get them to try to <coughs> assist those folks with outreach services. Um, my graveyard officers, since the parks close at 10 o'clock, they're really working on trying to keep those parks clear during the middle of the night. The next issue that <coughs> we run into a lot, and this has been going on for a little while and we've been trying to pin it down, but Sundays at Manzano Mesa Park. We've found that there's a huge congregation there when officers aren't present and it turns into drag racing, tires squealing. So we're putting presence over there. Um, I have um, a TAC plan that's going on right now that specifically addresses that to try to help some of the residents that live in that area get some relief from that because it's, it's summertime, they wanna have their windows open and they really don't wanna hear the really loud music and the tires squealing. and. One of them even characterized that she could smell rubber burning because they were burning tires out on the street. Um, <clears throat> one of the other issues that I see a lot is our hotel circle area. And that actually is an area where we have our, our POP project, our problem-oriented policing going on. And we have a, a big presence of officers there. They do a lot of proactivity throughout that area. But what's gonna, I think gonna be key to that is it's right across the street from Los Altos. So I've worked with Commander Weber, and because he has Los Altos, I have Hotel Circle, and those two areas tend to feed each other. The, both of these area commands, the businesses in that area, have now started to form what's called the Hotel Circle Los Altos Business Coalition. That is, I think, gonna be critical, and they're doing this through our crime prevention specialists, which are incredibly valuable to each of the area commands. 
Um, we think that getting the business owners on board with us and, and what that's going to do is that's going to foster that communication and that discussion to try to help us get to those areas where we need to target specific places that occur within crime. Um, and the last thing I'll say about the, the foothills is the residents up there are absolutely wonderful. We have one of the largest groups of neighborhood associations and neighborhood watches in the city. They're very involved. My community police council is incredibly involved in what the foothills does. Um, we speak with them monthly and sometimes more frequently than that. Um, so please, if, if you all live in the foothills and you don't have a neighborhood watch in your area or a part of a neighborhood association, give us a call at the substation and we can try to help you get set up with that because those, those neighborhood watches are very, very important to us because they're a key conduit of information to the officers and to the command staff up there. So thanks for this opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you, Commander Collins. Next up, we're going to hear from Lieutenant Rene Barraza from the Southeast Area Command. Good evening. Uh, again, I'm Rene Barraza from the Southeast Area Command. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I'm filling in for Commander Yara, who's uh, absent due to a vacation. So I'm uh, very delighted to be here. Um, in the Southeast Area Command, uh, our, our area encompasses everything uh, east of I-25, uh, south of I-40, and everything west of Eubank. Uh, it also encompasses the Kirtland Air Force Base. Um, it's a big geographic area. We have, uh, just like all the other commands, we have a, a business district. We have, uh, we have our international district. So we have our challenges in the southeast, of, as you all know. Um, but one thing we continue to do is we build, just like Chief Medina said, that proactive approach to policing. Um, we target the, um, the crime. Um, our, we do have two teams that are uh, the proactive uh, response team, and they're working seven days a week. So we're very, uh, we're very honored to, to be allowed to staff two teams under Chief Medina for the Southeast Project Response Team. Um, they work hand in hand with uh, some of our Special Investigations Division to tackle some of the, the, the violent crime. Uh, one specific unit that really helps us out is the Gun Violence Reduction Unit. Uh, they come out in the evenings, they work with our PRT teams to work uh, in response and take that practical approach to our shot spotter activations. We're one of the area commands that's very, um, we, we benefit from having that, that gun detection uh, device system because it gives us uh, immediate knowledge of when somebody's firing a, a firearm in the neighborhoods and it gives us our officers that response. So um, thank you to uh, Chief Medina to allow us to have two, two teams to address some of those problems. Um, one of the other things that we work on is uh, recently um, we developed a, a Southeast uh, Entertainment Area Attack Plan under Deputy Chief Olvera. That began in May, it'll go through December, and we're putting uh, more officers on bikes and foot patrol in that area. So we know the, um, our city and our state is re recovering from this pandemic. So um, if you're on about the entertainment area, which is on Central, the, basically the uh, uh, Knob Hill area, everything that expands from I-25 all the way to uh, San Mateo is gonna get some extra patrols in the evenings. Um, I don't have anything else, but if there's any other questions, um, I'll be happy to answer them. And as far as, uh, let me get back to the crime trends in the Southeast, I apologize. Um, we're also seeing a, uh, a minimum of a 10% reduction in all the, all the crime categories that you see on the website. Uh, some of this, that, some of that uh, we dedicate our proactive approach and we have our officers and our sergeants of every squad working uh, to make sure that they're out there uh, doing proactive policing. And you may see them conducting uh, field briefings. When you do see them in your neighborhoods, in your businesses or your parks, feel free to come talk to the sergeants and the officers. Um, we want to hear uh, the problems that you guys are experiencing in the neighborhoods uh, so that way we can address those. But thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Lieutenant. And it's so great to hear about some of the reductions that we're seeing in the area command. So thank you so much for all that you're doing. And again, thank you for being here to answer the questions that are coming directly from you, the community. So without further ado, let's jump right on into those questions that you've been sending. Um, the first one is, what steps does APD take to follow through on Crime Stoppers tips? Who would like to take that one? So uh, one of the things that, that we'd like to go ahead and answer that is uh, once that uh, Crime Stoppers tip comes, oh, 
Uh, once that Crime Stoppers uh, tip comes in, uh, it's sent to either the um, division or the area command uh, to um, look and see what the details are uh, on that Crime Stoppers. There has to be a response within the, de uh, the department to those Crime Stoppers. And then it's, uh, it's also put out on our website. Uh, it's put out uh, on different uh, uh, social media platforms and really getting it out to the community. Uh, once a Crime Stopper tip comes in, it goes through the uh, Crime Stoppers, uh, and whoever uh, provided that Crime Stopper obviously will will uh, uh, will get a uh, a number. Uh, again, we want to keep this and make sure that it stays anonymous, so they'll be provided a number. Um, and once uh, w once there's any um, update on that Crime Stoppers tip, uh, obviously uh, there's uh, it'll be uh, logged that. That uh, that there was uh, there was a uh, resolution to that. So that's kind of in a nutshell uh, what the crime stop. Thank you, Commander Sanchez. And before we get to um, some of the other questions that have been coming through, we have heard a lot about street racing, lots of traffic problems, and all the area commands. And the best person to talk about all this is here with us as well. Um, I'd like to introduce Commander Joe Veers, who um, oversees the traffic division. Thank Commander. You. Uh, and share what the traffic division has been doing uh, across the city. Uh, my name is Joe Beers. I'm the acting commander for the traffic division. Um, our traffic division within APD is comprised of several units. Uh, the two biggest components are going to be the motors unit, which is the officers on the motorcycles um, taking crash reports and doing uh, fatal investigations, traffic enforcement, and also is our DWI unit, uh, which mainly focuses on the DWI issues in the evening hours, uh, weekend time. Uh, we're also going to be adding a swing shift motor squad here shortly in the next month uh, to address some of the um, evening and weekend hours issues that we see with uh, some of the traffic problems that we've been having. Um, but mainly the traffic division has a dual approach uh, to enforcement. Uh, one's going to be a proactive approach, and the second is going to be a uh, support approach. Uh, what I mean by that is as support, uh, we like to partner with our investigative units, the field units. Um, do what we can citywide, um, join TAC plans, focus on some of the issues within the area commands, um, requests from the area commanders themselves, as well as uh, 311 complaints from citizens that come in and to the mayor's office. Um, so we take a support approach um, to that aspect, but we also take a data-driven approach um, ourselves uh, using DDAX, which is a program where basically we overlay the traffic crashes, traffic enforcement, and crime stats in certain areas and conduct TAC plans in those areas to focus on combating crime as well as combating some of the uh, traffic issues that we're seeing. Um, with the pandemic, um, we've obviously seen a huge increase, increase in speeding as well as racing and reckless driving as well as uh, modified exhaust. Um, some of the things we've done to attack that issue has been um, back in around January through March, we conducted a couple month TAC plan in the evening hours where um, officers would come in outside of their normal duty hours. And we did this using some grant funding um, for traffic grants that we do receive. Uh, and it was an overtime assignment. So these are in addition to their normal hours. So basically we're getting extra patrols in. Uh, they would come in and address some of these uh, street racing and exhaust issues. Um, obviously street racing is extremely dangerous. Um, we've had a couple of uh, fatalities in the city, unfortunately, involving either street racing or excessive speed. Um, so we've tried to address some of these issues, and obviously the modified exhaust is definitely a quality of life issue that we're trying to combat. Um, but we've issued out several citations and done numerous TAC plans. Um, as Chief Medina had mentioned earlier, we did partner with state police on two separate occasions to do a very large-scale um, operation regarding street racing. Um, both of those proved to be successful. The first one, we issued about 90 citations, and the second one was about 150 citations. So overall, it was a big success. Um, we also take a educational approach with these issues. Um, it's not just about enforcement and giving people citations and court dates, but um, we also want them to know the dangers of it. Um, so we're trying to build some community partners with local drag strips to um, extend that out to the community and educate them that it's safer to do these activities in these areas 
rather than on the streets where somebody can get hurt. Um, so that's another big um, push that we're going for. Um, we've also been part of the downtown initiative um, that was mentioned earlier. Um, there's a lot of uh, modified exhaust and racing issues in and around the downtown area. Uh, the past few weeks, the traffic division has dedicated numerous personnel to those operations uh, to help combat those issues. Um, another thing we're looking forward to doing, uh, this was brought up recently by the mayor, is the uh, speed cameras. Um, something that's being brought up as a discussion to hopefully you know, move that process along and see where we can go with it. Uh, there's definitely going to be a different approach this time as there was the last time. I definitely believe it's gonna be more effective. Um, as far as APD traffic and the area command officers, uh, we can't be everywhere all the time to enforce those traffic laws. Um, so having these devices around the city um, just as an extra level of protection for the citizens to ensure that people were slowing down, watching their speed, and just a little bit more aware. So um, it's not really about fines or tickets or anything like that. The biggest thing is safety. We just want to increase the safety of our citizens. Um, so those are some of the new uh, activities that we're doing in traffic. And um, if you guys have any other questions or traffic issues, please call 311. Uh, call your local area command. I work uh, pretty closely with all the area commanders, so they let me know if there's any traffic issues, and we can start focusing on addressing those specifically for you. Thank you, Thank Commander. You. And before you put the mic down, I'm going to go to you again next. We're, we've had so many questions come in around speeding and street racing and all of that type of thing, but the next question is also traffic related. What's being done about all the people with expired tags? Oh, that's a great question. Um, for quite a while, there wasn't really any enforcement action or citations being issued for expired tags. Um, the biggest reason for this was due to the pandemic, a lot of the MBD offices were closed. It was hard to get any appointments in to get your vehicle registration renewed. Um, there was a pretty big gap or delay in that. Um, so basically, there was a time period where um, not very strict enforcement action was happening on that. Um, I can tell you now with everything opening up that officers are out there. We are aware uh, MVD is open. Um, things are being able to be fixed with that. So definitely something we keep an eye on. Um, a lot of times people don't realize the registration is expired. So, you know, it could be as simple as reminding people or, you know, reminding them that, hey, check your registration. Sometimes people do it for two years, so they don't really think about it until they get pulled over. Um, it's not a major violation as far as like speeding or anything in that regard, but uh, definitely is against the law, so make sure that you guys do check your registration and we will be out there looking for that. I would imagine it's quite an oversight being that so many people weren't driving very much um, over the last year, so definitely a good reminder. Our next question is totally shifting gears. Uh, what's being done about criminals in the city being released? Um, this person says when judges keep letting these people out over and over again, isn't it undermining what your officers are doing? You know, Lisa, I think it's important that we recognize it's a systems problem. And a lot of times the Albuquerque Police Department is the easiest to point the finger at that there's issues with crime. But in order for us to truly reduce crime, we need a functional criminal justice system that is operating at a maximum level. And the best way I could explain this is if the metro area were to produce 10,000 arrests in one year, our prosecutor's office only has the ability to prosecute 5,000 cases. Our courts only have the ability to uh, process 3,000 cases. Anytime you have a system that can only operate at 30%, you're going to have issues of efficiency, and we're going to have that effect of the revolving door. And what we need to remember is we need to be advocates for the DA's office to get more resources. We need to be advocates for the courts to have more resources. We need to ask for resources outside of incarceration. I believe there are individuals that can change, and it is our job to ensure that when we could get these individuals into treatment programs, that they should be in treatment programs, because we know the underlying factor is substance abuse. But at the same time, we have to be tough on crime, and there has to be a line drawn in the sand. And when an individual turns to violence and is violently affecting our community, it is imperative that we say no as a community and that we demand these individuals stay in custody and stay in jail until they can get the help that they need. We have to be tough on crime in order for us to turn this around and we will continue to work and advocate for all parts of the system. 
30%, remember that. 30% is not an efficient system, and we need to be advocates to get that up in the 90s. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that answer. Um, next question comes from a person from Facebook. Does APD have a no intervention policy regarding property protection? Who would like to take that one? Not you know, I, I, I'm not sure I understand what the question yeah. is. <laughs> the question was simply, does APD have a no intervention policy regarding property <laughs> protection? I, had, I think I had that asked in one of my uh, CP. Uh, Can I take the mic? Uh, I did have that asked in one of my, uh, my uh, neighborhood associations. Uh, and uh, no, uh, we don't. Uh, I, when we see somebody committing just because it's a property crime it doesn't mean that apd doesn't interact or doesn't uh take action uh, i believe a lot of times this has to do with what we see on social media and videos and and part of this had uh the question that was asked to me had to do with an incident that happened i believe it was in florida where individual comes in a buy goes into a super or a store starts to steal merchandise and they just watch him do it um, no, we do take appropriate action. If a crime is being committed, our officers will take action. They do not stay, be, uh, step back and just watch it happen just because it may be a misdemeanor crime or a petty misdemeanor. We do. It is our, it is our duty, and it is uh, what we have to do to ensure that we provide those services to the community because that's what you're asking us to do. Um, and I don't know of any situation, and you know maybe the chief may, or but I don't know of any situation where an officer has just stayed back and watched somebody, you know, a crime get committed. You know, I think it's important that the community understand that property crimes are the crimes that affect the community the most. It's the number one complaint we get, other than speed racing. And while violent crime is a huge community concern, it actually affects a very small portion of the community. The vast majority of the community is, is affected by property crimes. I was in our property crimes division and ran it during two times during my career. In 2010 and 11, we became very proactive in property crimes enforcement and we had some of the lowest crime rates that the city's ever had. We also developed a culture within property crimes to be proactive and that carries through today and is evident as every commander speaks about the reductions that their area commands are seeing in property crimes. I am committed to ensure that we enforce property crimes. I wish we could inf investigate every case fully. We simply just do not have the resources. But our officers are de dedicated to ensuring that every time we can take an individual to jail for stealing a car, that we're going to take them to jail. For breaking into a house, they're going to have to go to jail. We have to ensure that the crime that affects the community the most is addressed by the police department and that we're proactive in doing so. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Chief. If, if I may add also, I know I've had these questions brought up to me at other neighborhood association meetings as well. Um, one of the concerns that people have is more of the low level, petty misdemeanor shopliftings and stuff like that. And people get discouraged for lack of a better word of when they don't see people go to jail for every single time police interact with them. And, and there are certain parameters with the McClendon settlement that doesn't allow officers without the exigency to actually take somebody to jail, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not gonna be held accountable for their actions. And like Chief Medina said before, there are times where we come across individuals where it's a substance abuse thing or it's a, it's a mental health disorder and, and enforcement isn't always necessarily the best way to handle and to curb that issue. And we try to provide them with resources outside of uh, enforcement action or incarceration to make sure that that stuff doesn't happen again. And I know I've had people come to me and say, well, they should just be going to jail. Well, we need to do a better job of educating our public and letting them know that it's not just about taking people to jail to reduce these, some of these issues, that there are other issues that we're tackling other than just enforcement. Thank you, Commander. Now, what we also saw during the pandemic is lots of people ordering stuff online and getting lots more packages. And so this next question is, do you have any advice for people having issues with package theft? All right, Commander. So this is something that I see a lot in my own area command. Um, the best advice for when you have packages delivered, 
obviously is always try to be there about the time it's delivered. Now I know that that's not feasible, especially with our life schedules, the way they work. I do know that some of the shipping companies, they, you can alter the way your package is delivered. It can be picked up at their um, distribution centers. Um, some, of the, some of the packages actually end up in the lock boxes on the mailboxes, which is, which is helpful. Um, but the one thing that we always tell folks to consider is the use of like ring doorbell cameras. Um, those things actually get really high, pretty high resolution video for, for as small as they are. Um, and that way, if we see people, we can identify them, then we can turn that into an investigation. I realize this is a huge problem. It was a huge problem during the pandemic and it hits a lot during the holidays because everybody wants to order packages because it's, well, I mean, let's be honest, it's a lot simpler than having to go all the way down to the mall fight the crowds and deal with that. So it's it's a huge convenience. But again, try to have it delivered when you're there or maybe have a neighbor pick it up. Um, I've actually spoken with a few of the folks up in the foothills that they'll try, if they're not gonna be there, they'll make sure their neighbors are aware. Um, so it's, it's all about helping each other. But those are just some of the things, it's a very easy crime to commit and it's a very difficult one for us to catch. But if if there's some steps you could take, um, that would probably be helpful in securing your property because nobody wants to have the arrival notice and nothing be on your porch. Thank you. Know, one thing I'd like to add on to that is Commander Collins touched on helping each other. And I think that's where it's important as a community we say no to a lot of these crimes. A lot of times as neighbors, uh, we see when a package is delivered and we see the car that's trolling the neighborhood. You need to be visible protect yourselves and protect your neighbors. Simply going outside and standing and watching somebody uh, will change their mind in committing a crime because they feel that there's the likelihood that they're going to get caught. We don't want you to intervene. We don't need you to endanger yourself, but simply seeing and reporting goes a long way. Years ago, I specifically remember a case when I was in property crimes and we were asking people to report individuals who knocked on doors and asked for somebody who didn't live there. Uh, we knew this was a method being used to see if somebody was home. If nobody answered the door, they would kick the door in and they would steal uh, items from the home. We had an individual report a car and two blocks away, officers found that car at a local park. Detectives were able to link that vehicle to 18 residential burglaries, all because a neighbor picked up the telephone and said, this doesn't look right, can officers come out here and check it? We're not always going to be able to immediately get there, but that vehicle description may become key in us identifying a criminal either then or later when detectives pick up the case. Thank you, Alicia. Now, Chief, both you and Commander Collins address something very important, which is involvement, having eyes you know, out there for neighbors. But you also mentioned that you have a high involvement of neighborhood leaders in your area command, and I just wondered, is there a way for the communities watching today, and they live in your area commands, that they can get involved, that they can um, interact with you more, that they can watch out for each other? What are those mechanisms in which they can engage with your area commands? And if you would like to start, Commander mm -hmm. Collins. Sure. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, we have uh, a program called Prime Pre Crime Prevention, and each of the area commands has a crime prevention specialist that's assigned to that who really is kind of the beginning steps in getting involved in your neighborhoods. Um, they're generally the ones that you want to call first to, to help with starting up a neighborhood watch. Um, they can give you information on which neighborhood association you live in. Um, our crime preventions, my crime prevention will go to businesses and they will perform, she will perform crime prevention through environmental design, also known as SEPTED um, reports for certain areas that way you can help reduce some of the some of the issues and, and a lot of it is just just that environmental design if a bush is causing something she may recommend to have that bush trimmed removed um, but that also fosters communication with the businesses and some of the residents around there but I would suggest um, calling your area substation whichever command you live in and, and ask those questions and the crime preventions they're, they're pretty good and they'd be willing to help with getting you started on that. And then the other main thing is, is just meet your neighbors. I mean, if, if you get along well with your neighbors, um, try to meet them, try to talk to them, 
um, because like Chief Medea and I both said, we're, we're, when we live in neighborhoods, we, we want to help each other. We want to keep, e keep an eye on each other's homes and cars or when someone's on vacation, you just want to keep an eye out. The more eyes helps you and it helps us. Lieutenant. So in addition to that, I just wanted to jump in as far as uh, getting involved. A, a big thing, there's a lot of neighborhood associations throughout the city. I know the commander talked about reaching out to your crime prevention specialist for each area command, and they could help you get set up with making a neighborhood association. Now, not only just making the association, but actually going to the meetings. You'll meet the neighbors that are directly next to you, as well as the neighbors that are a couple blocks away, but are part of your neighborhood. So that's a big thing, going to your community meetings for the neighborhood associations. On top of that, there's also a monthly CPC meeting for every area command, and those you get to bring the, your, your questions and your concerns to each commander, each uh, lieutenant that's in charge of those area commands, and, and they could answer those questions and help you get relief uh, to answer your question, or they could direct the activity from certain concerns that you have. Uh, we also have uh, Coffee with Cops. I think that uh, uh, we have one coming up this week, and I, I'm sure Commander Sanchez could let you know about that as well, happening up in the Northwest Area Command. We have these events happening all the time. Uh, I believe they're, they're put out on our social media page and just follow the social media page and you could see these events that are happening and you could get involved and get in touch with one on one with an officer with the sergeant, lieutenant, commander, the chief comes out to all of those as well or most of those but you could, you could get in touch with us as well but meeting your neighbors, meeting your area command as well as meeting all your officers is your best bet. I highly encourage all of these activities. I think that they're very valuable with uh, connecting the, the dots between us and the community. And I know there's some areas of concern in my area commander neighborhoods where there's people that don't report out of fear of retaliation. Um, that has came up a few times. Um, and I wanna make sure that people out there know that if they wanna remain anonymous but they still wanna report issues of concern, they could definitely get a hold of us through our, uh, our emails, through 311. There's a lot of different avenues that you can call where if you are afraid that if your name gets out there, something might happen to you or your property, there still are avenues of, of getting involved, but, it, but staying anonymous. And, and if you go to the websites, we can make sure and, and have that happen. Also, um, I know that the area commands have newsletters that go out monthly um, that give basically an update of the area commands of what's going on and the ins and outs and crime trends and different activities that are happening. Um, and if anybody wants to be part of those email chains, uh, please also get a hold of the area commands. We'll make sure and get your, your email on that. That way you can receive those updates as well. Thank you, Commander. Would you like to add anything, Chief? You know, I just, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our comms team. A lot of times they're behind the scene and people don't see them. And, and Rebecca Haley and Gilbert, they do a great job. And they're actually the ones that spearheaded why we're here today. When I took over as chief of police, they had the idea of live questions with the chief. And we started with those live questions from the chief. It moved on to town halls about uh, equity, inclusion, and working with diverse communities. And now it's gotten to this point where we're having this town hall to address crime and issues within the community. And we're bringing our commanders in. As our programs continue to grow, I just want to remind uh, the public that you could always ask questions one of the things we wanted to do as administration is make sure we're accessible. That's why I agreed and I like the idea of having these uh, live updates uh, on Facebook. And if you ever have any questions, you can send your questions to apdquestions at cabq.gov. And uh, those questions will be filtered. And uh, when we do have uh, Facebook updates, uh, we'll be able to provide the public with some of the answers to their questions. So please, if you have any questions, it's apdquestions at cabq.gov. Thank you so much, Chief. And again, we got to a lot of questions tonight, and we will continue to answer those questions via that website, via Chief's live Facebook town halls as well. We'll try to do this in this format again, too. I think it's super helpful. Just keep those questions coming in. We hope to continue interacting with you. We really appreciate you joining us this evening, and thank you to each of you, all the commanders and lieutenants and chief who joined us tonight to answer the questions directly from the community. Thank you so much, and have a good night.